भाति विनोर स्वाहा शिल भक्ति विनो हार्दिक सारे हरे 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 राम हरे राम गम राम हरे हरे हार्दिक सारे हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे हे हर सरे सर सारे हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण सर हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे राम हरे राम हिंदे थाय घोर हरे भरे भाव हरे भाव हरे भाव यशमती नंदन ब्रज बर नगर गोकुल रंजन coming his mother calls him for lunch i'm not coming kana lunch is ready not me i'm playing krishna doesn't want to eat he wants to play <laughs> okay so that's a beautiful that song or that bhajan is actually one of the favorite bhajans of shila bhakti siddhanta saraswati maharaj before he departed the planet he asked for two bhajans to be sung one was jasomati nandan and the other one shi uh, shi rupa manjari pada and he said that he said that bhajan is the highest of all expressions of bhakti glorifying shri rupa goswami okay so the book is over there and i'm over here I'm here. You don't have to walk. <laughs> That's okay. You get only three words. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Three words. Maharaj is here. That's all. <laughs> Maharaj is here, and That's it was a great fortune to have him here after the lockdown. Uh, Maharaj is actually the liberator of the lockdowns because the main preaching field of Maharaj is the jail. That's the metal world is the jail, so that way <laughs> everything is in jail. but within this jail there are many jails uh, within the western world and eastern world and maharaj specialization is preaching to the jail inmates and enthusing them to come out of the jail so maharaj written a book also called the holy jail book two books two books man apart from your part the holy jail which is a, a compilation of how the prison ministry works and what is the experience of the people who became devotees within the jail so it's a very very special field and uh, we have been having association maharaj before lockdown once a year but uh, last three years we could not have him here i was locked down that's <laughs> okay <laughs> i was but, in jail <laughs> <laughs> so maharaj is here to unlock us maharaj was uh, born in new jersey in 1947 so he just 76 year old yeah 76 years young 75 75 year young <laughs> Young man is not old. <laughs> you saw in enthusiasm. Don't give me any extra credit. <laughs> <laughs> and 
1971 he came across the devotees. In 1973 he got initiated by His Divine Grace, Yesi Bhaktivedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada. And after some time he has been serving in the uh, New Vrindavan. And New Vrindavan, we all know it's a historical chapter in our response history and <laughs> Australia is there. And in 1986, uh, Paraj accepted the sannyas initiation and then he has been uh, traveling and preaching. Especially he has based, based, been based in Chicago and he has been expanding the prison ministry preaching from there. Apart from that, Maharaj also travels and preaches in other parts of America as well as India. India has been to many parts actually. Maharaj makes a whole tour of Maharashtra when he comes here. And also in the Western Europe, Croatia, Slovenia, Italy. So it's our great fortune that Maharaj is here for almost a week. And we can just see what kind of great enthusiasm Maharaj has. We can just, you know, we are fortunate we have the big pillars like this in the temple all. Otherwise, we don't know what would have happened. <laughs> so let us very warmly welcome. Maharaj to Shri Shri Radha Vrindavan Chandra Mandir by once loudly chanting the Hare Krishna Mahaman. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Shri Mad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 2. Ajamiya, delivered by the Vishnu Dudas, text 43. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Itva Kalevaram Tirte Gangayam Darsanaranu Sadhya Sarupam Jagre Bhagavad Parswa Vartinam Itva Kalevaram Tirte Ganga Yam Darsanaranu Sadhya Sarupam Jagre Bhagavad Parswa Vartinam Hitvakalavaram Tirte Ganga Yam Darsanaranu Sadhya Sarupam Jagre Bhagavad Parswa Vartinam Ladies, any? Itva, giving up, Kalevaram, the material body, Tirte, in the holy place, Gangayam, on the bank of the Ganga, Darshanat Anu, after seeing, 
sadhya immediately. Swarupam is original spiritual form. Jagre, he assumed. Bhagava Parsva Avartinam, which is fit for an associate of the Lord. Translation, upon seeing the Vishnu Dudas, Jamio gave up his material body at hardware on the bank of the Ganges. He regained his original spiritual body, which was a body appropriate for an associate of the Lord. Hmm. Very short purport. Mm -hmm. The Lord says in Bhagavad Gita 4.9, Janma karma chame divyam e evam yo veti tatpataha tatva deham punam janma maiti mam eti sorjuna one who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, <coughs> does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains to my eternal abode, O Arjun. The results of perfection in Krishna consciousness is that after giving up one's material body, one is immediately transferred to the spiritual world in one's original spiritual body, to be an account to become an associate of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Some devotees go to Vaikuntha Loka and others go to Goloka Vrindavan to become associates of Krishna. Om Vigyan Timiranda Sya Gina Jana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Nena Tasmai Sri Gurvena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Hauravani Pacharine Irvasesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Satarine Pancha Kalpa Taru Vischa Kripa Sindhu Pavacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnava Bio Namahona Maha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadadra Sivasiri Gaur Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. so, so we hear how Ajamil in his very desperate moment called out without any offense the holy name of Sri Lord Narayan. He called in what is known as Namabhas, or calling with not knowing it was the Supreme Lord's name he was calling. He was simply calling his son. But the power of Narayan's name manifested because when he heard his own name, when he heard the name of Narayan being called, he remembered Lord Narayan. <laughs> so all, and just by doing that, all the reactions of all of his sinful activities, not only for that, that birth that he was in, but for all his previous sinful activities were completely destroyed. He became liberated but he didn't attain the stage of pure bhakti. So therefore, as this verse said, he had to give up his material body at hardware on the banks of the Ganges. So then he was carried to hardware and he spent uh, 12 years in hardware, hardware doing bhakti and he reached pure devotional service, and then he was qualified to go back home, back to God. It's amazing when you see how merciful the Lord's name is, simply calling once, and it wasn't even the name of Krishna, because it is explained that the name of Krishna is even has more of these spiritual potencies as the name of Narayan, or at least it manifests more of the spiritual potencies. So even by chanting the name of Vaikuntha, he actually became fully purified of all sinful reactions, unknowingly. 
And then he had to live for 12 more years, but his life was simply pure devotional service. And Prabhupada wants to make a point here that <clears throat> the, po the goal of life is not to stay in this material world and try to make some nice arrangement here. <laughs> because there's no such thing as a nice arrangement. Whatever arrangement we make in this material world is finished, either immediately or in time. Or even if you make some nice arrangement, you can't even enjoy it. Just like there, is, there was one man in America, <clears throat> he was quite wealthy. I knew, I knew his uh, persons who worked for him. They were devotees. And he had this huge, gigantic land where he had horses and various types of animals there. Beautiful lake, all kinds of nice uh, greenery. It was many, many, many hectares of land. But he never came there because <laughs> he was always working in his office, <laughs> making more money. <laughs> He would never, he'd come there once or twice a year to see how things were going on with his workers. So what's the use? <laughs> he had this big estate and he's, a, he's, he's toiling very hard in the office every day so he can get some more money, so he can think how rich he is, so when he dies, he can die very rich. It's better to die rich than to die poor, right? No, it's all the same, because <laughs> when you die, you die. It's just, it just doesn't matter who, what is your material status when you die. So it was interesting, the people who were working on his, his land and keeping the land, they were enjoying the land. <laughs> they were, and he even gave them a house to live in. They, one was my disciple and her husband, they were living there. And they were taking care of the land, and they lived freely, and they enjoyed, enjoyed the land which was his, and he was in the office, you know, <laughs> calculating how much more money he needs in order to uh, reach a, know, a certain number, I think. <laughs> but you see how the, the materialists, they, they can't even enjoy what they, what they somehow accumulate. And even if they try to enjoy it, they have no time. <laughs> There's one statement in the Shastras. I built a house so I could be happy and the house burned down. <laughs> I built a house so I could be happy and then the house burned down. <laughs> so, this is material life. <laughs> whatever, try, whatever you establish in this world, the time factor, sometimes it's quick and sometimes it's not, but it, it always works in the same way, is that it takes away everything and we're left with nothing. <clears throat> but here, if we use our time to become fully Krishna conscious, what does that mean? Then, uh, manaso deho geho, you'll get you more arpilum tu alpade nanda kishore. Bhakti Vinoda Kaur, he gives the formula. He says, my home, my wife, my family, my possessions, my very body, it's yours, Nanda. You Nanda Kishore, he calls Krishna Nanda Kishore. He wants to give everything to Krishna and dedicate everything for the service of Krishna. Therefore, although he has many things, he understands it belongs to Krishna. Nothing in this world belongs to us, not even the body we have. Sometimes we say my body, but you didn't produce it. <laughs> Your parents gave it to you, and they got their body from their parents, and you just go back and back and back. And then even if you find somebody who owns the body, then the ingredients make that make up the body was not made by the person who owns it. The ingredients are actually coming from higher sources, and that Krishna says, Bhumi Rapanalobhaya Kamana Buddhyeva Chahonkata Iti Ame Bena Prakriti Astada. He names the eight elements which make up all of material existence, and he says that actually all of this is my energy. So everything belongs to Krishna. Everything. <laughs> Prabhupada used to say, to help us, Prabhupada would say, my money is my money, and your money is my money. <laughs> 
which means everything belongs to Krishna and, and the spiritual master is the caretaker of everything. So he takes it, he uses it for Krishna. Therefore, everything belongs to Krishna. And we can use it and we can also get something to live comfortably and nicely in this world, at least for some small period of time. But everyone should know that there is no future in some in, in trying to make a nice arrangement in this material world because in due course of time, just like Prabhupada talks about Lomasa Muni, one sadhu, he, uh, he was a very hairy sadhu and he had a benediction that for every hair on his head he would leave one life of Brahma. And so he was doing his bhajan on the banks of the holy rivers. And then he had a few followers. And so his followers were thinking, Guru Maharaj doesn't even have a cottage. We should, you know, arrange for him to get a place. So they came and asked him, Guru Maharaj, we could see you're living in the open and we want you to have a nice place. So give us permission, we'll build you a nice cottage. He said, why waste time? Don't bother. I'm not going to be here that long. <laughs> so in, in relationship to eternal time, even the long durations of life with Lord Brahma, um, from the highest planet in the material world down to the lowest, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, all are places of misery. Why? Because birth and death is an incumbent and innate quality that cannot be destroyed simply by material arrangements. It can only be destroyed by actually freeing oneself from the entanglement of material life. So Prabhupada quotes a very important verse in this verse, Janma karma chame divyam mevam yo veti takvataha taktva purnam janmani naiti mameti surjana. This verse is when the devotees were asking Srila Prabhupada, what is the most important verse in the Bhagavad Gita? Prabhupada named this verse. <laughs> That's recorded. Why? Because if you know, as it says here, one who knows my transcendental nature and my appearance in, act in activities in this world, you're immediately upon the leaving of this body, you're transported back to the spiritual world automatically. So what is that knowledge? What does it mean to know Krishna's transcendental activities and uh, transcendental appearance in this world? That means to absorb oneself in hearing the glories of the Lord. Because simply by hearing the glories of the Lord, we awaken that knowledge. Because both the sound vibration and the purification of the heart come by hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord automatically. Sometimes devotees asked, just like someone asked me yesterday, you know, what's the essence of Krishna consciousness? Where do you should you focus to get the maximum amount of benefit? And it becomes easy. And it's just Shravanam, Kirtanam, Krishna, Smarnam. That's the essence. To hear, to chant, and to remember the glories of the Lord and make that a principle of our entire day. Satam prasangam mamavirya sambido bhavanti ritkarna rasayana kata. This verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam, third canto, describes that those persons who, who hear and chant the glories of the Lord, they derive great satisfaction and happiness, so much so that they are, they are on their way back to Godhead automatically. So Krishna's activities, or Ram's activities, Gornitai's activities, Jagannath's activities, even the activities of the Vaikuntha manifestations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead can purify the heart completely and elevate one to pure conscious, pure devotional service. Because when, when that becomes a continuous activity of the devotee, then, gra then gradually the material world is gone. There's no more material world. You might say, well, you know, we have so many other things to do. We got to maintain our family. We got to go to school and get some good world marks in school so we can get a job and so we can make money and, and then uh, die like everybody else. <laughs> 
But all of these extra things that come by way of living in the material world can also be purified. When you understand that the process is that you to use everything in the service of the Lord. And Krishna explains that in that all activities should be done for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord Personality of Godhead. And those activities that are not done, uh, Bhagavatam, Sutta Goswami says, Shrama Eva Kevalam, a useless waste of time. Because as we mentioned, everything you establish in this material world is under the influence of the time factor. And we are not under the influence of the time factor. When Sukadeva Goswami was talking to Maharaj Pariksit, explaining him the final stages of Srimad Bhagavatam just before he departed the world, Sukadeva Goswami diverted for a while and started to talk about the, the difference between the body and the soul. And he said, Maharaj, you know, you're about to leave this world. You're going to die very soon. But don't worry about it because you know, you're not this body. This body is simply an external manifestation of the material energy given to you. And in one point, it'll be gone. So you are pure soul. You are part and parcel of Krishna. Your actual identity is completely different from everything material, both immediate and extended. <clears throat> and, and sometimes we like to find some kind of material identity, even within the realm of material. Just like Prabhupada, not Prabhupada, actually one very senior Prabhupada disciple was preaching to one couple in South America. And he was trying to explain to them the difference between the body and the soul. And he said to them, well, you're a, you're a, you're a soul. In other words, you're, you're a spiritual being. And the woman, she was there, was a couple. She said, yes, I know I'm a soul, but I'm a female soul. <laughs> and my husband, he's a male soul, you know. <laughs> so his bodily attachment and identification goes really deep. That we, we can't even seem, seem to get over this idea. And the whole material energy is reinforcing our, our material uh, attachments and material identities. So that's why we need to hear and chant the glories of the Lord and associate with the devotees as much as possible. And as we traverse through the different stages of bhakti and come to the stage of attachment for Krishna, then our, our devotional service becomes, what we say, ecstatic, it becomes very, very wonderful. To become attached to Krishna become attached to hearing about Krishna, become attached to serving Krishna, become attached to uh, associating with those devotees who are, who are also hearing and, and uh, serving the Lord. And according to one's, um, and that's what the meaning of this verse is, one who knows the transcendental nature of my activities and appearance. And that doesn't mean, well, somebody says to you, uh, what is Krishna's activities in Vrindavan, and you tell it one pastime. That doesn't mean you know. That means you can remember something you heard, and you're repeating it, and that's nice. But knowing it means knowing it within the heart. Knowing it completely is a realization, and not such as some theoretical idea. And that comes by absorption in hearing and chanting, because that material energy will pull your consciousness in and then after some time, just like when Sri Narada Muni was, uh, was um, he had reached perfection, this is before he actually became Sri Narada Muni. Um, the Lord was in his heart, and he was meditating on the Lord in the heart, and then the Lord manifested himself externally and appeared before Narada Muni in his transcendental form. He was a Vaikuntha, he was the forearm Vishnu. And Narada Muni, in that, uh, of course, he hadn't reached Narada Muni yet. This was his previous life. He, he, he experienced that there was no difference between him and the Lord. It's not that he thought he was the Lord or the Lord and him were non-different. It meant that there was no difference in um, desire. The Lord was trying to bring him back and he wanted to come back. 
So if we have that desire, I simply want to go back to Godhead. I want to simply, again, associate with Krishna in loving devotional service. We are doing that now. We're practicing it for to when we can actually come to the point of realizing it. Uh, the more we practice, the more we realize it. Srila Prabhupada would say, devotional service, simply practice. <laughs> That's all. The more you practice, the more the more natural it becomes because Jivaya Surupai Krishna Nichidas. And that all living entities are by nature part and parcel of Krishna. But the process is to hear. Because all of the activities of devotional service center around the process of hearing. Sometimes devotees say, Well, I have too many services to do. I don't have enough time for chanting and time for hearing. But you have to make time. Services are important, but that hearing and chanting is what really goes to the de and gives the gives us the transcendental happiness. And it says, uh, what is that verse? Saru Sangha, Saru Sangha, Sarva Sastri Hoy. Lava Mata Saru Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoy. One moment's association with a pure devotee of the Lord, by hearing from that pure devotee, you can reach complete purification of heart. In other words, there's no more material desires, no more material attachments. So Prabhupada was speaking, and he was, he was quoting this verse. And the devotees said to Srila Prabhupada, yeah, we're hearing from you every day, but we're not purified. Something's wrong with the verse. <laughs> We've had so many lava matas. <laughs> Lava Mata means one eleventh of a second. And so, but Prabhupada gave the clarification. He said, when the wood is wet, it doesn't ignite, doesn't make a fire. Only when the wood dries out, then the fire begins. What does that mean? That we have to continually hear until we reach that stage of actually hearing. <laughs> What does that mean when you hear and you get realizations on what you hear? Someone tells you, you read in the books, I am not this body, I'm a spirit soul. And then you, 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 you can accept that, you understand that, you, you believe that. But when you read it, or when you hear it, and you actually come to the point of understanding you're not that body, you can actually realize you're not that body. It's a difference between, just like when we sit down to eat, Sometimes we go to these different, you know, shops or restaurants and they give you a menu and you read the menu and you're reading all of the nice food on the menu and thinking, oh, wow, this is so nice. And you, you just finish the menu and you put the menu down and you say, wow, that was a great meal. <laughs> you didn't get anything out of it. So that's theoretical understanding of spiritual knowledge. <laughs> When you actually taste the, the, the sweetness of the, uh, the offering, then you get the experience and you get the benefit. You get nourishment, you get happiness, you get freedom from material attachments. So that's the actual, that verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam explains that. That just like eating brings happiness, uh, satisfaction of hunger, and what's the third one? Hmm? Hmm? And cessation of hunger, right? Yeah, all three cap. So automatically one gets realization of the that knowledge, one gets detachment from everything material, and one gets promotion to the spiritual platform. So that is the power of hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. So it cannot be emphasized enough. So Srimad Bhagavatam is the essence of all spiritual scriptures. It is the Sunam Bonam. Actually, I was just reading yesterday in the Bhagavatam in the 12th Canto how even the culmination of all of the Vedas cannot uh, come to the standard of the importance of Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam is Krishna himself in transcendental sound. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati describes the different cantos in Bhagavatam as analogous to the different parts of the Lord's transcendental body. First and second canto is his two feet, and the second, the third and fourth canto is thighs, 
and the middle of the body, and then gone all the way up to the smiling face of Krishna as the tenth canto. The eleventh canto is his transcendental forehead, and the top of the head is the twelfth canto. So each of these, and so there's, it's non-different. These the, the, the Srimad Bhagavatam is non-different. It says in the very beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam that when Krishna disappeared from the planet, everyone was feeling a great unhappiness. I mean, was great unhappiness. But then it was understood and explained that the Lord left himself in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam. So by hearing more of the pastimes of the Lord, absorbing ourselves as much as we can, we can purify ourselves from all material and we can actually experience real transcendental happiness because the Lord's pastimes, activities, his qualities, his forms are unlimited as he is. Sukadev Goswami is narrating to Maharaj Pariksha. Maharaj Pariksha is hearing for seven days. After six days, uh, Sukadev Goswami is kind of slowed down on the narration and said to Maharaj Pariksha, uh, are you feeling hungry? Are you feeling a little tired? Do you want some water? And Sukadev, uh, Maharaj Pariksit even became even more in, enthusiastic. He said, now you're about to bring begin Krishna in Vrindavan. So please continue. Yeah. He wanted to hear Krishna's pastime. He didn't even think of his bodily needs at all. Like, that's an example of how even one becomes so absorbed in one's, um, <clears throat> in the activities, one forgets about eating, one forgets about sleeping. People in the material world even do that too. They get so absorbed in their material activities and they have so much attachment for it, they, uh, they skip eating, sometimes they don't even sleep properly. There is one story, it's kind of a, not a very nice story, but it's a true story where two boys were living in the same dormitory in one college room in some university, Western country. And so one of the boys went out and he, went, he left for a few days. And the other boy was there, so he got on the computer. And he stayed on the computer for three days straight. He didn't eat and he didn't sleep. He was on the computer for three solid days, 24-7. At the end of this, uh, when he got to the third day, he collapsed. And then they found him, they saved his life. He, he, he got so absorbed in the computer that he didn't even consider his bodily necessities. So we can do that too with Krishna, but we won't collapse. <laughs> you, you'll find yourself going up. <laughs> You'll be just moving higher up in the, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, if we, it, and the Krishna's more powerful than any, you know, computer. <laughs> so, and by hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, one can uh, absorb themselves and Krishna himself. And then the more you know Krishna, the more you hear about Krishna, the more you, the more you actually are eager to get back to Krishna. And it says here that one who reaches perfection in this life is transferred immediately. Then this is an interesting, sometimes people say, well, after you die, how long does it take before you reach your next destination? And that's a good question because it's mentioned in different, in different proportions depending on the nature of your life. If you're very sinful, then you go to Yamaraj, and then he, he punishes you for your sinful activity. And it takes you a while, actually months, to get an extra, a new body. The less sinful you are, the faster you get a body. And if you are a devotee in pure devotional service, it says just like the flash of the thunderbolt, or the lightning, just that flash that you leave this body and immediately you're back in the spiritual world with Krishna. There's, there's not even a calculated number of time. It's that fast. Your disappearance and your reappearance in the spiritual world is instantaneously. Now that's, so devotee doesn't have to worry. Krishna takes care of that personally. 
So here we see how um, Ajami, oh, he got special mercy by just by chanting the holy names of Lord Narayan, finished his life and then went back home, back to Godhead. Despite all of his sinful activities, I mean, his sinful life was so grievous. It wasn't just an ordinary sinful life where he was, you know, just wasting time, you know, he was simply committing very heinous crimes, such as ki kidnapping people and getting money for them, like you know, robbing, stealing, doing all kinds of nefarious acts. He didn't kill anybody, but he was com committing many, many horrible crimes. But all of that was wiped away simply by his namabas chanting of the Lord's name. So, of course, you can't plan that. Some, some people think, well, yeah. I'll just be like Ajamil my whole life and <laughs> you know, I'll do all kinds of sinful activities and then when it comes when it's time to go, I'll say, Narayana <laughs> He's not there. <laughs> Can't do that. <laughs> if you plan it, it doesn't work. Because <laughs> Krishna knows how oh, you're gonna try and cheat, huh? <laughs> it's like going to college and you don't you uh, you go you don't go to your classes you don't study the lessons you don't do the homework and you show up for the examination. <laughs> what do you expect? <laughs> You're not going to pass. So, therefore, yeah. So we should uh, understand that that's, that by hearing and chanting, and you can see how Ajahn and how powerful, but. We can use the word powerful, but how merciful the Lord is, just how merciful. He's eager to give us, you know, a chance to go back home, back to Godhead in so many easy ways, but it all centers around hearing and chanting his glories. And the more we do that, the more we will become purified and actually attain transcendental happiness and full spiritual knowledge. Okay, so we'll stop here. Hare Krishna. Any questions or comments? We have one here. We're going to see. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. You're mentioning this point about <clears throat> wet grass and dry grass, but sometimes we. Oh, yeah, wet wood and dry wood. Yeah. Sometimes we see in the example of Shastra, there's individuals, even a Jamil, and then also I'm thinking Magari the hunter, mm. where even though the wood is wet, it kind of, is a, it, it acts immediately. So what, in those circumstances, what's the... Well, it was that in the case of a Jamil, and Prabhupada makes this point, and the Acharyas also make the point, that when he called out for his son, Narayan, soon as he heard his name, the name of Narayan being chanted by himself, he remembered the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So in that stage of, we might say, f chanting that was free from any offense, you see, but he didn't go back home to God. He, he actually got liberation, but he had to finish up and actually achieve, you know, pure devotional service. So he had to spend another 12 years. McGrary the hunter? We don't know. Is there a destination that was given by McGrary? There's no destination that's given, but it's clear that his character became completely reformed on... Well, then, you know, it's Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, by the association of Sri Narada Muni and Parvat Muni, both. He... Uh, so that's also a very quick way to also by the serving and associating with pure, very pure devotees, one can make fast progress back home, back to, towards back to Godhead. That association is purifying. So, so as long as we are associating in the right mood, that's the important thing. McGrary. <clears throat> He had to give up everything he understood to be his correct. And only when he did that was he able to receive the mercy of Narada Muni. He was trained by his parents, 
by his father, and he had the culture of that from generations. To kill animals, half, <clears throat> and that's all he knew. And he had no other livelihood than that. So he had complete faith and obedience to Narada's instruction. He gave up that whole idea, and he stopped, he, not only that, he stopped killing altogether. Not only. So that faith in the pure devotee and the obedience of following the instructions is very powerful, it's purifying. Yes, <laughs> any question back all the way towards the middle there. A microphone's coming. <laughs> Maharaj, uh, in the purport, Prabhupada says few devotees will go to Vaikuntha and few will go to Golok to become associated with Krishna. So who will go Vaikuntha and who will go to Golok? Where do you want to go? <laughs> Golok. You want to go to Golok? All right. Put in your request. <laughs> <laughs> and then you follow in the footsteps of a, a, a eternal associate of Krishna and Vrindavan. And, wor and work under the guidance of eternal associate and follow the process and then you qualify yourself to go back to uh, Goloka. So you have to qualify yourself by en engaging in the, the service of a associate of Sri Vrindavan Dham. So that's one of the features of what is called uh, Raganuga Bhakti because you can't give back to Godhead by Vaidhi Bhakti. Vaidhi Bhakti means following full rules and regulations. Raganuga Bhakti means spontaneous attraction and loving service to the Lord, which goes through different stages. And one of the principles of that is one has to connect oneself with an eternal associate of the Lord, serve that associate, glorify that associate, and by the mercy of that associate, they'll take you to your uh, higher stage of understanding of who you are in the spiritual world. That's a process. But if you don't follow that process, then uh, whatever your consciousness is at the time of death, then uh, yam yam vapi smaram bhavam, then you'll go wherever like that. So to go to Goloka Vrindavan means to worship the Lord in that mood of Vrindavan. And not simply worship the Lord in rules and regulations, which is Vaikuntha. You can get to Vaikuntha by rules and regulations. <laughs> but not in, not in Goloka Vrindavan, you have to come to uh, spontaneous loving service. In a mood of a, in a mood of a, a resident of Vrindavan. <clears throat> that's a process. And that's explained by the Acharyas, but especially um, Raghunath Das Goswamis and Rupa Goswami, also Sanatana Goswami. But Prabhupada includes it in his lectures and in his writings also. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, can I ask one more question, Brahmas? Yeah. Uh, now where do you want to go? You still want to go to Goloka? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Follow that process. There's a nice book put out by Shiva Ram Maharaj called Spontaneous Devotional Service. I think you, you should read that book because it gives the whole blueprint by how you can position yourself in the execution of devotional service. Yes, Maharaj. My second question is about this Ajamil pastime. So Ajamil, when he was committing sinful activities, he must have committed so many offenses to many other living entities. Mm. So they were, uh, so, but uh, Lord saved him in just by chanting one name. So uh, those who were kind of uh, got uh, problems because of Ajamil, is it not an injustice with them by Lord not giving any uh, punishment to uh, Ajamil? And uh, no, that's a special mercy of the Lord. But he acted in the proper way. <clears throat> he chanted Namabas, he chanted without attachments, he chanted free from any desires to... We're chanting the holy names of the Lord, but we still have 
we're still trying to fulfill our material desires while we're doing it. <clears throat> That's our problem. Now, Jamya had been completely uh, aloof from all of that. <clears throat> he was just, he saw the Yamadutas coming, the, the agents of death. <clears throat> and so he, he was looking for some shelter. So he called his son, Narayan. But when he heard his name, as I mentioned it, you know, and he heard the name of Narayan, he, he remembered the Supreme Personality of God, and Lord Narayan. And at that time, all of the sinful activities were wiped away immediately. It says, once chanting the holy name of the Lord, free from all uh, impurities, this is called Namabhas, or even Sudanam, and then uh, at that point you're liberated. You're already liberated. But then what you do the next minute, <laughs> and you go back to being unliberated again. <laughs> so, so we try and we endeavor to chant the holy names without offense. If you work in that way, then ultimately. So there was no, nothing unfair. The mercy of the Lord is never unfair. It's available for each and every one. One has to qualify himself to receive that mercy. Thank you, Maharaj. All right, Krishna. That's a question over here. Harish, thank you very much, Maharaj. Uh, I really like that uh, point, how you showed the importance of uh, developing absorption and how we can do that with that good example. And oh, I'm sorry, I missed the question. Uh, Means little, I little like that point which you shared about developing absorption. Right. Need of it very important. Then that effect will be there. Love matra sadhu sank. Yeah. Uh, one small question I want to ask Maharaj. It is a little out of curiosity means based on the previous question. It's a little little slower. If you talk yes. a little slower, I can catch yes, it. Yes, Maharaj. So I just wanted to ask uh, like uh, we hear that when devotees go to Vaikunt Loka, so uh, the Vaikunt airplane came and here. Vishnu Dutas come. Vishnu Dutas come to take. So when 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 devotees are going to Golok, how do they go? Because Vishnu Dutas are not there in Golok Vrindavan. <laughs> Radhi Sham, he's worried about who's going to take him back home. <laughs> he's going back home, but he's not sure who's going to carry him. <laughs> So you just put in your request and see what happens. <laughs> but you'll, don't worry, you'll get there. <laughs> you just follow the process, that's all. But I mentioned that it's instantaneous for those who develop pure devotion. And as soon as they leave the body, they're immediately, and that, that's mentioned in the fourth canto, instantaneously back home, back to Godhead. Then you have the example of Dhruva Maharaj. When Dhruva Maharaj, he, he, the, 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 the Vaikuntha airplane came for him. So that was explained. And of course, he, you know, he offered that, that air, and the airplane also come for his mother. So there seems to be this, you know, there's some time period that's going on that. But everything is up to the Lord. Just purify yourself, and then the Lord will do the rest. Don't worry. <laughs> Devrat Prabhu asked about comparing Murgari, and so when I think about Dundukari, Dundukari in the, the ghost, yeah. Mahatma, so it appears that. Uh, He's just in seven days done, no twelve years. But he so, was absorbed. Yes, Maharaj. So what is more powerful actually? Because Dundukari <laughs> heard Bhagavatam. And he just went back to and he was more sinful actually, appears to be than Ajamil also. You're because looking, the prostitutes you're, killed you're him. You're looking for some 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 benefits, huh? <laughs> you want a, you want the shortcut route, huh? <laughs> What is more Just follow the process. Don't worry about it. The rest is up to the Lord. Don't take birth as a ghost and try to imitate him. <laughs> <laughs>
and think, well, I can follow in the steps of Dundavi, you know. It's, <laughs> all of these situations are, are coming up by natural arrangements. And therefore, the mercy of the Lord is being given according to their consciousness. That's all. Ajimeo, Dundubi, and all, are, that's their situation. And the Lord is showing them mercy about, about how much they are absorbed in remembering him with devotion. As soon as you remember, or even if you chant once the name of Krishna purely, you're qualified to go back home, back to Godhead. But you may want to stay here because Radishan needs you to do some more service. So, <laughs> so, so he won't let you go right away. <laughs> so, but a devotee doesn't even want to go back home, back to God. The devotee wants to serve the mission of the Lord by preaching Krishna consciousness. That's what the, the devotee is more interested in and uh, preaching to the conditioned souls and going back home, back to Godhead. Because then Krishna is even more favorably inclined, then you're guaranteed to go back to Godhead if you give your life to spreading Krishna consciousness. Because you're making other souls, you know, fortunate. And that's what Lord Chaitanya and all of the Acharyas come to do the same thing. So if you're doing the work of the Acharyas and the Lord, how much mercy are you gonna receive? And Prabhupada also says that anyone who preaches Krishna consciousness, they're immediately recognized by the Lord. Immediately. And he says they're guaranteed to go back to Godhead. Even if they they fall down during that, Krishna will pick them back up and again they will achieve perfection at the time of death. Maharaj. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Very beautiful class. I, especially one of your points uh, hit me very hard. Uh, uh, I have seen this uh, even before, but when I heard you, it made a lot of sense to me that one fellow had a farm where he had a retreat center and there were cows giving pure milk and uh, fresh greenery and everything, beautiful big bungalows and everything. But the servants and servant maids had a very nice uh, life there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he was uh, living in the city and paying for it. Yeah. You know, working hard to count the money, how will I maintain it? Mm -hmm. That really was a very striking example. Although I have seen it, I never thought it in that way until I heard from you today. That's a real live uh, example. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it was very nice marriage. Yeah. So, which co goes to show that modern man is uh, greedy for accumulating wealth, but he has no time to enjoy the wealth he earns. Yeah, that's true with most people. They work hard all day and they come home at night and they just fall asleep. <laughs> Can't even enjoy the house. <laughs> So you have to take a vacation on the weekend, and then you spend all the time preparing for the vacation. And the time you're done preparing, the vacation is over. <laughs> <laughs> and then it rains, you know. <laughs> so you know, it, you know, in a material world, you can't win. <laughs> you can't win, no matter how hard you try. All right, it's great. Samarpan Prabhu. Uh, he is very fond of reading and hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and also teaching it also. Uh, he is the one. Yeah. So, he often has one question going on for last many years to many preachers. Mm. His question is, which is most powerful process in devotional service? Whether is it hearing Srimad Bhagavatam or chanting the holy name or rendering service? Because he says that, you know, Parishit Maharaj heard seven days and he went back to Godhead. Dundukari heard for seven days and he went back to Godhead. Whereas Ajamila, you know, he chanted a holy name, but then he took 12 years to go did, back to Godhead. Did you read the poster, Prabhupada's poster over there? Prabhupada says, distributing books are more important than, than kirtan. <laughs> yeah. 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 You directly ask me. Take this. <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Fifteen days by mercy of Radha Shampu, I go to Sankirtan Bhaspa. Yeah, to no, only fifteen days, that's all. Uh, <laughs> remaining fifteen days, I want to hear from you. There's 365 yes. days in a year, only fifteen days. What happens to the other 350? Mm -hmm. Fifteen days in a month. Oh, in a month. 
That's, uh, well, you're, you'll get halfway to Vaikuntha then. <laughs> 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 Maharaj, I'm just following instruction. Don't blame him, it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to blame the, the authorities here. <laughs> no, yeah, you, you know, except it's between you and Krishna. <laughs> if you're sincerely chanting, if you're sincerely worshiping, you're sincerely serving. That sincerity is the perfection of the activity. Sincerely means you want to please spiritual master, you want to please the Lord. So all apps, and Prabhupada would always say, all activities and devotional service are absolute. But then, at times he would also say that, but but those who preach get special mercy. And those who distribute books, there's like one girl asked Srila Prabhupada, and she was a book distributor. She said, Srila Prabhupada, we're out there distributing your books. What happens if we die during, during this dis distribution and we, don't, we can't remember Krishna? Prabhupada said, don't worry, Lord Chaitanya will force himself into your consciousness. <laughs> So that was Prabhupada was saying, this is how, how sacred it is to uh, distribute the mercy of the Lord. Especially in Kali Yuga, this age is so bad. It's getting worse too, getting worse. So people are suffering like crazy. I mean, like, I mean, the suffering is becoming more and more apparent. And as Kali Yuga goes on, it gets even worse. <laughs> Of course, Lord Chaitanya's golden age is coming, but still, Kali is very active in bringing the, the conditioned souls down to more and more hellish existence. So anyone who is preaching in this age is doing a great service. So preaching means, well, of course, we mentioned distributing books, but giving lectures. But even if you're reaching out to people and bringing them in, Say you invite someone to come to a temple, and they come to a temple and they, they get some mercy. That's preaching. <laughs> so I'm just using that example that anyone who brings others into Krishna consciousness, in whatever way you do it, then that is very important, that is very valuable, especially in this age. <clears throat> People are lost. <laughs> really lost. Even those who practice some form of spiritual life or religious life, they don't understand the goal nor the process. Mm -hmm. They think it's to improve their material situation. That's the main reason why people come to spiritual life or religious life is to make a better material arrangement, to stop suffering. <laughs> I was in... Yeah, I preach in London, so I was in London, and one uh, one lady, and she came came in front of the deities, you know, and yeah, some she was from the Indian culture, and she was praying very strongly. My son, he's going to school and he has ten subjects. Please, Lord, give him ten A's. <laughs> So, at the end of the semester, the boy got nine A's, not 10. So she went back and said, my dear Lord, I asked for 10. You only gave nine. <laughs> so that's how people see the Lord as some kind of, you know, check in. Let's see, what do I need? Uh, some health, uh, you know, some health. And solve this problem for me, Lord. Solve this problem for me. The problem is to just become Krishna conscious. You solve all your problems. That's all. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. My question is this: this pastime of Ajamela, this is uh, more of a negative example or a positive example? It is more of a negative example or a positive example for devotees. Negative or positive? Yeah, very positive. positive. A very positive example. It shows the, the glories of uh, 
the holy name and the compassion the Lord invests in his holy name. It's very positive. Yeah. In fact, Bhagavatam is glorified for this particular pastime. Sometimes they refer to Bhagavatam as the story of Ajami. Very positive. It means after having the association of that, his prostitute, the activities with, in which he indulged in, means I, those were not the, means it sounded more like that it is setting a negative example that what devotee should not engage into. Well, obviously you don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but because of his life went in that direction, but somehow he received the mercy of the Lord. And there, there is some side stories. The side story is once that one sadhu came to the home of Ajamil. This is a story I heard a few times. And Ajamil wasn't home. His wife there was there, and she was pregnant with the, that, that son. And he said, um, I have a message for you. I think you should name that son Narayan. So she was told, and then when her husband come home, she, she told him. So it seems like the Lord kind of arranged somehow for him to give that name, and then ultimately. So that was due to Agyata Sukriti, what he had performed in his early life. He was very pious, very religious, very saintly Brahmana, but he fell down. <laughs> So the Lord didn't forget about his early life and how much he was devoted. So that was to his credit, which brought him to the point of actually calling out the name of Narayan. So yeah, you want to avoid sinful activity, obviously. But if something leads you to perfection, then whatever leads you to perfection is actually, is actually, in one sense, the mercy of the Lord. Even if it looks something different. And you don't look convinced at all. I'm convinced now. You're convinced? Yes, my Okay, it was a very positive pastime, believe me. <laughs> yes, my I am convinced. Even now. if you don't believe me, you can ask others. No, I'm convinced. I'm convinced. Very positive. But we can't follow that pattern of life and expect to get the same mercy. Uh -huh. It just doesn't work like that. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. We have a question somewhere? Oh, okay. Okay. Who has the question? Raise your hand. Okay. They changed their mind. <laughs> Maharaj, I want to... You have a question. Okay, you don't look like a Mataji. <laughs> Radha asks that someone have a question in Mataji's side, so you can get to the mic. You can ask for them. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Maharaj, uh, thank you very much for a beautiful class. Uh, when we remember about Sila Prabhupada and his disciple, they undergo a lot of austerities, a lot of tapasya, especially we heard from Radhana Swami Maharaj about you and Radhana Swami Maharaj austerity in Nivrindavan. So my question is that when uh, you are undergoing such austerity, such tapasya, so what should be our mood to accept the tapasya? Because in currently in my personal life, when that when that sense is coming about the tapasya and austerity, little bit we, we off for off for the comfort zone. We, we accept the austerities given in the Shastras as foundations for performing devotional service. But if we want to do something even more on top of that, then we should also get, make sure that it's not something that is useless or unnecessary. And therefore, one should get advice from senior devotees or from one's guru 
about taking on extra austerity that is not what we say authorized austerity. Like if you want to, you know, like on a codice, so we we know a codice means chanting. So you can chant more and more in a codice. That's an austerity, but it's a recommended austerity. Now, if you want to uh, say, well, you want to go preach in Beijing, China. <laughs> you think, well, I'll, you know, I'm going to, you know, purify the communists. You, you should get some, uh, you know, uh, permission before you do that one. Authorization, sanction, blessings. It's not like you can automatic. So taking on certain austerities can cause you to either, you can also can cause you to go down. So you should have to be, be clear, clear on what is, what is your austerity and what is the intention. Austerity is meant to increase our bhakti, that's all. Because bhakti leads to, austerity leads to bhakti. Mm -hmm. Knowledge leads to austerity, austerity leads to bhakti. But the whole process of Krishna consciousness centers around various types of austerities. Mm -hmm. But if you want to do something on top of what is authorized or given in the Shastras or recommended by the temple authorities and the spiritual master, then you should, that you should get clarification and permission for. So you don't make a mistake and go down. So clarify your intentions. <laughs> Like some, you know, a, a codice is meant to for full fast. Every every codice is supposed to be near Joe. Every a codice is actually near Joe. Every codice is near Joe. But Srila Prabhupada didn't give us that because he knew it would be too too difficult for us, and it wasn't necessary either. So he gave us a, a type of a codice that is easily executable, but at the same time, it's still an austerity. So if you want to do something greater than that, then you, you might want to clarify that. <clears throat> to get permission, get, get, get uh, sanction. See if it's actually beneficial. Because it says an intelligent person will see the results before the activity. Sometimes we, we want to perform the activity, but we don't, we're not seeing, seeing the results ahead of time. Or we're not even thinking about the results. We're more, and more enthusiastic, enthusiastic about performing the activity. <clears throat> But there's a lot of activity that looks like austerity that may also bring you down in Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. It can make you hard-hearted, or it can actually be completely useless. Mm -hmm. It could take away from your devotional service. Mm -hmm. So I, what I would say is, you know, get the blessings of the senior devotees before you go. Mm -hmm. Unless it's already given by Guru and Shastra, then you're then you're fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? We have one up. Well, this is a very good question pay group here. Uh, the last place I went, nobody asked any questions. This is good. Yes. Microphone. Thank you very much for a nice class today. Uh, you spoke about uh, pure devotional uh, hearing and chanting. And if we are not able to do that, at least engage your body, mind and words in uh, service of uh, Lord, boy, mind and family, service of Lord. Uh, so Maharaj, uh, at the end, you said that uh, the sinful activities, uh, sinful activities Ajamil did that got contracted because of uh, chanting one holy name. Uh, actually, I was thinking that because uh, I am not emotionally connected to the victims of uh, 
previous victims of azam like that question prabhuji was also asking yes. so i was not emotionally connected so therefore you know uh, it is very easy to appreciate azamil's purification uh, but i was thinking if we transport the azamil story and superimpose on 21st century in this age of internet where already his wife and mother have already written blogs on azamil how he has you know done it and we have read it we know the victim we know the azamil also and now he is getting purified when we hear that so uh, it uh, uh, and we tell the day come on uh, azamil is purifying because you know he is chanting and all then people won't appreciate instead of uh, you know uh, it is very difficult to appreciate because of the atmosphere created uh, because of uh, the uh, emotional connect so uh, in, uh, with this background where there is a confusion created in kaliyuga because of such well, information i don't think so and those who I, who understand the mercy of the lord and the situation Well, very much appreciated. Whether you're from the 21st century or the 10th century or or the 26th century, <laughs> appreciation is done by understanding what is what is actually happening. It's not that the external environment should influence one's appreciation or not, or the time period. Those who are Krishna conscious will appreciate it. Because those who are not Krishna conscious, they will may have a hard time appreciating it or can't understand it. That's why we give explanations to help them appreciate more. That's the purpose of discussing these things. Okay. Uh, means those who those who do that uh, in terms of I mean uh, when it something happens and uh, uh, somebody appeals that okay please. Uh, i mean because uh, he is getting purified or something then people ask that now write an apology letter something so devotees write <laughs> apo- you we might have understood on the write uh, an apology the, so yeah for telling uh, if we say apichet sudurachar or anything like that we get uh, to ask uh, they ask okay or write an apology letter or something like that and uh, so with this in background i just wanted to ask like maras uh, Uh, that did, did you mean Al Jamil didn't go back home because he didn't write an apology letter? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not about I him. Forgot. Those who support him, they those who support uh, support him. The people uh, misunderstand that you know he's asking. Uh, uh, we are uh, uh, the person who is asking. uh, uh who is supporting azamil uh, the uh, other people misunderstand that we are asking for you know mercy uh, reduce its punishment or something like that so therefore you they don't appreciate mercy is given by the mercy giver you you can't you can if someone wants to show mercy they can show mercy and if they someone doesn't want to show mercy they you can't say that well they failed to show mercy it's up to the mercy giver to show mercy you can't say well we are uh, you you're a wealthy pair person therefore you have to give money he'll give money if he wants to so the same the, the person who is carrying the mercy it's up to that person that's why it's called mercy it's based on their decision to give or not give So that's why you can't compare all of these different situations and expect to get the same understanding from different from from people. Yeah. You have to see each situation as it is. <laughs> so Maharaj with this background I just wanted to ask a question on compassion. Okay. You 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 asked very good. Thank you. Shradi <laughs> Sham, you want to comment on this because this is beyond I I'm not sure I can handle this 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 he doesn't seem to be satisfied at all. No, I didn't complete my question Maris. <laughs> you didn't complete your question? Radhi Sham can answer the question because you have to listen to his answer because you're working here. <laughs> okay. Actually Maharaj uh, as he says and uh, there are two phases of life of a devotee one aggressive phase and a purified phase aggressive and pur- yeah, purified purified so in the aggressive phase one has plenty of conditionings due to which one has misbehaved with uh, in a relative friends and vaishnavas and uh, in a purified phase a person reflects back and repents and is remorseful uh, and is very sorry and is con as he says many people who have acted inappropriately 
have uh, repented by writing letters to those whom they hurt you know like the wife or children right, or right. parents and so uh, now some people say that your one letter doesn't make any difference to us you know what you did to us and there are people who are uh, like uh, yeah. their animosity they are revengeful ah uh, revengeful yeah so they want to see them punished even after the person has sought forgiveness but from krishna's point of view you know apichetu darachara bajate mamana ne baat krishna says yeah uh, yeah because he has already started chanting the holy name he is cleansing his heart he is rightly situated uh, krishna sees him like the way you said how yeah. krishna sees him yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a really really nice discussion that's given by vishwanath chakravarti takur between krishna and arjun you seen that discussion and I mean arjun is give, saying well you know he's so sinful he committed so and, and krishna's pretty much you know dismissing all of arjun's statements and said you know because he he's engaged in my pure devotional service you know he's saintly i'm going to take him back to god and you look at it from the point of view of practicality is somebody makes a mistake and but realizes the mistake does the proper retribution with the, in, the persons involved and then changes their life and becomes again properly situated why are we picking on that little thing or that thing that they did in the past that's just i think it's small mindedness <laughs> to use a word because i think the people who want to make that an issue and keep that as the label of that person they have they have problems themselves <laughs> and they're they're just reflecting their own problems on to to someone else that's the way i see it and you can cut that out of the tape if you want but I'll get I'll get smashed for this class anyway. Everybody's listening. They don't say oh, Maharaj, you don't know anything. I'll get 700 letters. <laughs> yeah. But if you understand how the things work according to Acharya's the scriptures and Krishna and you see the situation for what it is. I mean, how many of us have made mistakes in the past? do we want to be held responsible for our mistakes even though we're not doing it anymore i mean what we did before we became a devotee some of us we won't even talk about that <laughs> but uh you know prabhupad was very uh you know he saw the he saw all right don't do it any more get back into the krishna consciousness and then you're rightly situated and then there should be a time period where again they have they, they have to show themselves that they are actually seriously again absorbed in devotional service it's not like it happens immediately obviously but uh when you fall down that means you're you're always falling right is that what it means no look look oh, we have the example of jagai and marai i mean lord chaitanya wanted to kill them of course but because he what did they did to lord nityananda but then lord nityananda pleaded on their behalf and then lord chaitanya actually understood every and then he because they sincerely repented both of them and they actually came to the point of you know i mean they were just like crying for what they had done and they were really sincerely sorry lord chaitanya told his disciples he said if you should not see them the way they were before you should see them now as what they are now lord chaitanya said that so what is and what did they do compared to what we did <laughs> i mean jagai and mare committed sinful activities that were he said even yamaraj couldn't keep up with it <laughs> it was 
And some of them are even described in other other statements by acharyas how how heinous their 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 crimes were. I mean, they killed people. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but but because they received the full mercy of the Lord, and they were fully repentant of what they did, and of course in their heart they were still feeling bad about what they had done in the past. But the Lord said, "You shouldn't see them." according to what they were, you should see them to what they are now. He said that to his disciples, his followers. He was strong about that. He didn't, he didn't make that statement kind of loosely. He was very strong about that. Yeah. But he, as I would, again, just to enunciate, each situation has to be seen as it is. You can't just lump everything up into one Apichet Sutsaracharo verse. You have to see everything and then accordingly, according to the situation. For instance, if somebody has abused children or abused women uh, and later on they're repenting, uh, the repenting devotee uh, in, in Iskand, the leaders treat it with in three ways. Uh, we call it the reprimand or suspend or remove you know, All right. from the position. After that is done. That's uh, that's the pun that's their punishment. Yeah, punishment. After that they are offered an opportunity to associate with Vaishnavas and be in the community of Vaishnavas. At the same time, they are not given any position where they can get a chance to uh, again abuse because of the revisiting of the con old conditionings. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not going to comment on that because the CPO will be after me. <laughs> so yeah, this is a. I don't want to get into managing because I don't want to manage the, the the situations in our our society right now. Yeah, so let's leave it at whatever is understanding. But yeah, everyone has a right to perform devotional service because that is the constitutional nature of every living entity, even if they're. And the examples are numerous, both in the Shastras and in, in practical everyday today life. So, but again, I just would say each situation has to be judged accordingly. And of course, restrictions and uh, certain removals are all forms of punishment. But I think the most important part of the retribution process is they they have to be they have to make amends seriously to the victims that they that they offended and those victims have to forgive them mm -hmm. That's important because yeah just like we have the example of uh Gopal Chakravarti when he offended uh, Srivast Thakur, you know, he, uh, he was suffering from leprosy. And then when he, he was living on the banks of the Ganges, and when Lord Chaitanya passed the first time, he asked for forgiveness, and the Lord wouldn't give it to him. He said, you think you're suffering now, you're going to suffer in hell even worse. But then, after three months later, after continuing his suffering with leprosy, the Lord came by again. And this time, he was sincerely and seriously repentant. But the Lord said, I can't forgive you, only Srivas can. And he sent him back to Srivas. And only when Srivas forgave him, then he was, he was able to be rightly situated again. So that comes to the point that, yeah, you have to make some type of retribution to the, to the persons you offend. You can't just say, well, I, I, I'm sorry, I, and so many things. No, you have to go to the, to the persons you actually offend. I mean, and sincerely and seriously, not just from f afraid of getting punishment, but sincerely, we have to be sorry for what we did to the person, knowing that we caused them some some wrongdoings. Yeah, that has to be there. Mm -hmm. Okay, does that make sense? All right. Well, we can.
महाराज की शीला प्रभुपाद की देर आर मोर प्रोग्राम महाराज इज गिविंग इन पुणे अनाउंसमेंट प्रभु श्याम प्रभु Hare Krishna so tomorrow Maharaj will be giving Bhagavatam class in Kunji Bihari temple and then and then day after tomorrow that's on Sunday again we'll have Maharaj's class here and the later schedule will be putting up in NVCC the later schedule you'll get on the WhatsApp groups as well as the poster will be put up on the notice board thank you Hare Krishna